Good morning. Welcome to the introduction to the AQR Carnival Project. Let's get on it. This is two major grades, so be prepared to do a lot of work in the next couple of weeks on it. Okay. All right, step one, you're going to choose a carnival game from some of the choices that are given, or you can get one approved by your teacher, and you will actually build this game, and you'll use this game in a carnival and collect data from it. And these are just a few games that are examples you could use. Plinko, Penny Toss, uh, just go fish, you know, you toss whatever in, you can use a fishing pole. I've had all these games before, so. Some of the choices you can have, ring toss, you use a two-liter bottle as targets and rope as rings. Bing bag toss, use a target made out of plywood or foam and with a hole in, in it to toss a bean bag through. Think cornhole. Can knock down using cans to create a pyramid with a rubber ball being used to knock down the cans. Um, here's some others. Bucket toss, attach three buckets to a board and have players try to toss a ball into them. Number wheel, um, create a spinner that lands on sections that identify winners or losers. In a dice game, you're going to use dice built by hand and labeled as uh, wanted to identify winners or losers. Okay, so people always complain. Well, I got to build dice. I got to make my own dice. Yes, you have to make your own dice. Go to the craft shop and buy some like foam or something. It's real easy. Think uh, the dice that you see on the Price Is Right. That's what you need to think about. All right. A game of your choice. You can uh, you can get a game that whatever, and you can just has to be approved by your teacher, um, whoever your teacher is. All right. So it's got to be practical. So you'll understand what I'm talking about. It has to be practical. Um, darts, although it's a good carnival game, it doesn't fit in with the district policy. Um, darts are considered weapons. They're sharp. They're pointy. People can get hurt. So no no go on the darts. Um, Submit a written proposal for your carnival game. No two groups in the same class may uh, make the same game. It's a first come, first serve uh, situation. I'll write down who's in your group and what game you're doing. The proposal should describe the game, the materials you'll need to build it, and a summary of the rules to determine winners and losers. Um, step two, build the carnival game and fine tune your rules of play. Here's some sample rules for a bucket toss. Game players must hit the last bucket to win a large stuffed animal, middle bucket to win a small stuffed animal or a closest bucket to win a small plastic toy. Um, step three, which is part A, calculate the theoretical probability. You'll use some kind of information that you've derived from your game to create the probability that a person will win or lose a specific carnival game. Um, or if you have multiple prizes, uh, what is the probability of winning that specific prize? Uh, I can help you on this just a little bit, so that's what we need to work on. You'll submit the completed game, rules for the game, estimated expenses, revenue, and profit, and theoretical probability in the Google Classroom. So you'll complete this for the first major grade of the project. Um, as you can see, there's several examples of projects here that we can make. Uh, duck pong, um, fishing pond, so on, etc. All right, Carnival Day. After you've created your, uh, your Carnival project, we'll host a day one day where we will collect data. We'll have people come in and they'll play your games and you'll try to collect as much data as possible. Hopefully you'll get a hundred people to play your game because that's initially what we do. If you don't, we'll discuss on how you can do that later on in this uh, presentation. Um, step three, which is part B, you'll calculate the empirical probability from the data collected from the carnival. Uh, your group will need to show through empirical probability how customers will actually perform at your carnival. What you're gonna do is collect the data when you're actually having the carnival and see, just count who won and who lost and what they won. Um, from that information, you can determine exactly how much profit you made because the prizes cost money. Um, to build the game costs money. Um, you're going to collect money from them to play theoretically. And whatever you make, you have to subtract your expenses. So it's revenue minus expenses equals profit. And that's exactly how business runs in today's society here in the United States. So, Calculate expenses, revenue, and profit from this game, creation, and experiment. Base your answers on the results of 100 people playing your game. If 100 people didn't play, calculate the results of what 100 people would have collected. So profit equals revenue minus cost. Um, in order to increase your profit, you either need to increase your revenue or decrease your cost. 
So you'll learn a little bit about business by doing this project. Um, step five, prepare a slideshow presentation. Include slides on the rules of the play, the expected expenses, revenue, and profit of your game, and a comparison of the theoretical and empirical probabilities from the results of the gameplay on your game. And you'll submit this through the Google Classroom portal. Step six, you'll present your findings using a the slideshow presentation. Um, an oral presentation in front of the class should be no more than six minutes long, leaving room for a minute or two of questions and answer session. Um, additional visual aids may be used, like your game or maybe a, a, a graphical display you might have created. But the whole point is to educate your audience by explaining the rules of the play, the expected expenses, revenue, and profit, and a comparison of theoretical and empirical probability. Uh, the conclusion of step six Convince me, and, and I know I'm your teacher, but in this case, you're going to be a, talking to me like I'm a carnival promoter. You need to convince me why I should be interested in purchasing your game creation for my carnivals. Think big picture here. How much would your profit have been for a weekend with 5,000 people playing your game during a carnival? Uh, do not leave out details, okay? And be sure to dress like you're selling your game to me. This is a business deal, so you need to dress for success. All right. <clears throat> Individual grade, as with all my projects, you'll receive an individual grade for your group from your group peers, which is applied to your grade. An extra credit. Participation in the question and answer uh, portion of this presentation and a compelling argument for me to purchase your game may result in additional credit for your project. So this goes on both sides. Think about this. Even if you're not presenting, if you're asking pertinent and relevant questions that might stump the presenter, that would result in extra credit for you on your project. Um, <clears throat> uh, if you're up there answering questions, if you answer a question correctly and it helps the audience understand your project better, that's extra credit for you. All right. So completion of this portion of the project is the second major grade for the carnival project. All right. So um, that's the conclusion of the introduction to the carnival project. So I will submit a rubric. Um, I'm actually going to have a rubric attached to this specific thing. Um, this Google uh, Classroom uh, video that you're going to be watching. So check it out. Um, look at the rubric closely so you know exactly what's uh, provided. Um, I will leave the rubric in the notes in the Google Classroom. And if you're looking on the YouTube video, I'll just look in the notes and I'll have a link to go get that uh, particular thing. Thank you. Be blessed and be a blessing.